All right, Wildlings, you wanted the best, you got the best. The hottest podcast in Louisville, Kentucky, the Sean vs. Wild podcast. Of course, I'm your host, the man, the myth, the Sean Thriller Smith, the guy putting Rad back into talk radio. Thank you so much for joining me again on this Tuesday morning. Hopefully, your week so far, awesome. Your last week, also awesome. Your Valentine's Day, kick ass. I know mine was awesome. Uh, I will tell you that. I got myself the gift that keeps on giving. And I think, listeners, you know what I'm talking about. That's right. I ordered a lot of 50 Goosebump books from eBay. Uh, the ultimate Valentine's Day gift, and I should be receiving it at some point today. Very stoked on this. <laughs> so stoked. I think my mic clipped a little bit when I was talking about how very stoked I was. But um, yeah, hopefully your Valentine's Day was good. And uh, I was very happy with how uh, my V-Day episode turned out last week, if I may toot my own horn. Uh, I actually listened to it a couple times, and and I don't really go back and listen to too much uh, of my recent episodes. A lot of times I'll go and listen to some of the first ones and kind of do a little research, see where I can improve or that sort of thing. But, uh, I listened to that one twice. Cool brag. Loved it. And if you haven't checked it out, go ahead. Uh, that's the magic of podcasts. You can keep Valentine's day in your heart, 365 days a year, just cause Valentine's day is over. doesn't mean you can't listen to it. So make sure you go and check that out and make sure you check out this week's episode, because we're talking about one of my favorite subjects, video games. Anybody that knows me knows I love my video games, especially my classic video games. I uh, have quite a Nintendo, uh, Super Nintendo, Sega collection uh, in my arsenal. Uh, but yeah, we're talking video games today with my good friend, Marisa Lawrence. Now, Marisa Lawrence is an affiliate, Twitch affiliate, and we're going to be talking about her Twitch channel and all the... Uh, all the craziness that goes on uh, there. And we're talking video games. We're talking a lot of cool stuff. And, uh, you know, Marisa really opened my eyes um, to the possibilities with Twitch and streaming and stuff like that because, you know, where I thought it was almost all video games, you know, there's people drawing, there's people doing a bunch of stuff. So maybe the podcast, that's the direction for the podcast uh, to uh, have a Sean versus Wild Twitch channel where I can sit around and. I don't know, complain in real time. (laughs) Uh, But who knows, man? That would be just one of many awesome uh, announcements that I have coming up. Uh, A lot of these awesome announcements I'm going to be saving for next week. You actually may notice right off the bat next week some changes to the format of the show, and it's all due to some special uh, little things that I've got coming up. Also, I have some great guests next week. Very hot band a little band called Grey Haven. Everybody knows uh, about the success Grey Haven, Grey Haven's been having, um, and uh, what the future has in store for them. Um, but we're going to elaborate all on it. We got I had the dudes on the show, and uh, we're going to be talking about all of that next week. So keep an eye out for some uh, and your ears open for some new changes. Exciting things are happening for the Sean versus Wild podcast. So. Uh, yeah. And, uh, I know you, I know you guys will tune in next week. You're loyal. And speaking of loyalty, okay. I got to talk about my loyal sponsors at audiophileinc.com. I'm talking about Shane. Uh, Shane's going to give you the best deal in town, no matter what town you live in. Uh, he will ship to all 50 nifty United States and audiophile Inc. will get you taken care of for any of your screen printing needs. So, you know, t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, track shorts, uh, f- any kind of article of clothing for the fickle Ohio Valley weather. You want your stuff screen printed on it? Shane's got you covered. All you got to do, audiophileinc.com, audiophileinc.com, A-U-D-I-O-P-H-I-L-E-I-N-K.com. Ask for Shane. Tell him the wild man sent you. Make it happen. Also, my loyal sponsors at Audible. Now, you guys know Audible. It's an Amazon company. I'm crazy uh, about books. I love to read. And uh, sometimes I don't have time to uh, sit down and stare at a book. So I'm going to be listening to it. And um, with Audible, you can do that. They have over 180,000 books for you to choose from. And because you're a listener of Sean versus Wild, they're going to set you up with a free 30 day trial. Now, how do you get a free 30 day trial? Do you ask? Simple. You're going to go to audibletrial.com slash Sean versus Wild. AudibleTrial.com slash S-E-A-N-V-S 
W-I-L-D. And choose from over 180,000 audiobooks. Get yours. Give it a listen. If you don't like it, you can return it and get yourself another book. Um, and keep keep your Audible subscription as long as you like. You can cancel it anytime. And if you do cancel it, you still get to keep the book. How tight is that? And um, every time you guys sign up, I get a little bit of money sent to me from Amazon uh, to my PayPal account. And that helps keep the lights on here at the Smithsonian. You guys knew that already. Uh, but yeah, so uh, big thanks to everyone for tuning in. Big thanks to Joe Brock, that dirty dial booper. Uh, he, uh, you know, of course, will be working on the show uh, this week, every week. He's always m- booping the dials, making the moves, making me sound like a hundred bucks. And uh, speaking of a hundred bucks, he sold me some great new microphones uh, for a hundred dollars that I actually recorded this intro on. So if you think the intro sounds even better than usual, It's because I got some brand new mics up in this piece. So, yeah, guys, I've talked your ears off. Be prepared for an awesome, hilarious episode uh, with Marisa Sucks today uh, on the Sean vs. Wild podcast. Tune in, power up your NES, pop in Mega Man 3, and prepare to get wild. Yeah, so uh, we're chilling here watching Lucifer Rising here on the YouTube. Sounds off. Can't hear it, but uh, we're, we're checking it out. What do you think about all the molten lava? I'm into it. It looks real hot. Yeah, I'm trying to get like, uh, you know, more witchy and satanic in 2018. That was my New Year's resolution. Some people want to quit smoking and lose weight. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to start uh, lighting more candles and uh, being real into Satan. Yeah, I think that's a that's a really good goal to have. Because I mean, look look how far everything else has gotten you. Yeah, why that's not? True. Why not? You know, just praise our dark lord. Let's just change it up a little yeah. bit. Get, know, a little, get a little spicy. Next thing you know, this podcast is going to be the number one podcast in the world, and you'll know why, listeners. You'll know why. And if you've seen <laughs> Jennifer's body, then you know where this is going. I haven't seen Jennifer's body. Tell oh me, my God. dude. Spoiler alert, guys! If you have not seen Jennifer's body yet, turn the podcast off right now. Turn it off, then come back after you've seen it. Yeah, just it's a great movie. Go see the movie and then pause it here at one minute. And now you're back from seeing the movie. Okay. What it, now? You tell me what it is because okay. I'm not going to go see it. So, so the plot of Jennifer's body is uh, an emo band wants to become famous, so they find a virgin to sacrifice. That virgin is Megan Fox, who is in fact not a virgin, so she becomes a demon. You know, um, I don't want to stereotype anybody. Okay, I don't want to <laughs> judge anybody by their look, but she's me- well developed. For a high schooler That's in that what, movie. I'm just saying, Megan Fox by that time is already getting uh, some work done on her face and all that sort of thing. That would not be the first pick for uh, Virgin to Sacrifice. I, yeah, and they were they were doing, when they, they find her, they're at this show in a very crummy bar. There was tons of other definitely virgin girls there. But no, they go Megan Fox. Why do they go to a bar? That seems like your first uh, well, problem right there. Well, they were, they were a... Uh, a very, very not well known emo band. Oh gosh, gotcha. so, so it's know, probably just, just a place that they're they play. They're just on tour. You know what that's like, Sean, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Mostly the yes, all the sacrifices that you have <laughs> to make on tour. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, when you're listening, when people are talking about you know the sacrifices you have to make being a touring musician, they're talking about actual blood sacrifices that you have to make Illuminati uh, to make it big. Obviously, now we know. Now we know, and knowing's half the battle, guys. <laughs> This is what you need to know. You need to know that we're going to have a great podcast today with a good friend of mine, Marisa Lawrence. I didn't get the name right the first try, so this is actually take take two on the on that. You intro. did it though. You nailed it. I nailed it. Hammered him, and uh, you might know Marisa Lawrence as uh, Marisa sucks on Twitch <laughs> on on the internet <laughs> <laughs> on the internet. And uh, you were you were telling me that people ask you a lot. Oh, you're from Louisville. Your last name is Lawrence. You must be related to uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, and it's uh, absolutely true, hundred yeah. percent. And but you did you did have to. Why don't you tell the listeners what you told me? Um, so the Jennifer Lawrence I'm not related to, but my older sister's name is Jennifer Lawrence. Nailed so I it. do I do get to have um, a lot of fun with that. Yeah. But, oh yeah, Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, absolutely. I've heard of her as my sister. So oh, actually, NBD. I went to uh, Zanzibar not too long ago, and the doorman is 
uh, neighbors with Jennifer Lawrence's brother. And he saw my name and he was like, oh, I, I'm neighbors. I live next door to your brother. And none of my brothers live here. And I was like, what? And I was like, oh, he thinks. What's great, though, is like Lawrence is a super common last name. It, it is, but it isn't. Well, I mean, do people come up to me and be like, hey, dude, you related to Tracy Lawrence, the country music singer? Well, no. I, isn't her spelled with a U? Is it spelled the same? Because it can be Jennifer spelled Lawrence with a U. Jennifer Lawrence is spelled with a W? Jennifer Lawrence is, yes. And Tracy Lawrence is a guy, and his last name oh. is spelled with a W also. Oh, is it? I don't know anything about country, but Let no. me tell you, Tracy Lawrence had a great hit in the early 90s with a song called Alibis. And if you haven't heard it, guys, pause this podcast again. You're never going to get through the podcast. You're just going to be pausing it and checking like it all out. All these facts. Quality products. So Alibis by Tracy Lawrence. Check her out. Him out. <laughs> Check the cool. song out. The songs are her. He's a him. Whatever. Um, but yeah, and uh, I wanted to have you on here because uh, you're making big, you're making big waves on the internet on this thing called Twitch. Now I've already, I'm probably the last person to the Twitch party. I don't know much about it, so I'm going to need you to explain it to me and you know give the listeners a, a thing. What what oh, okay. what's Twitch all about? Um, well, uh, Twitch has definitely expanded over the years. Um, it used to be called Justin TV, and then. Uh, Twitch started off as a um, a little offshoot of that. Justin TV kind of fell off, and Twitch took off. So it's it started off just being about like video games, and um, for the longest time, up until I think the past like year or two, it's just been people playing video games for other people to watch on the internet. Right. And um, so uh, recently they, they started like an IRL section where, you know, creative people, there's people on there that are just, you know, digitally drawing. There's um, people playing music, different stuff like that. So it's not just playing video games anymore, but that's what I use it for. So I should get on here and have a Twitch account for my podcast. You absolutely can. Um, my friends who do the horror movie podcast have a Twitch account for theirs where they... Um, well, they play horror video games, yeah, um, and then they also um, have like little review episodes. Like, obviously, you can't stream the movie because it's copyrighted content, but they have a like, I don't know, you just sit and talk about it or whatever. Sure. Well, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, like a visual podcast, yeah, type thing. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. Um, there's different kind of like tiers of of what you are doing there. Like, I just. Um, I just reached uh, affiliate, so you reach all of these benchmarks, and then you can get a subscription button for your channel, so nice. people can subscribe and for you know x amount of uh, whatever per month, um, they can give donate to your channel, so you can kind of help maintain it and and do all of these things. So it's kind of really cool. You can get up to a point where you're actually partnered with Twitch. And you get like all of these like really cool benefits and yada yada. But sure, what does affiliate mean? Like, what would affiliate be? Like, what are you getting? What are you racking up here on Twitch? Um. Well, since I just hit that a couple of days <laughs> ago, I have no idea. I haven't had a payout yet. But um, you know, uh, a lot of people can make a substantial amount of money. It's a lot of networking and sure. kind of being entertaining more than anything else. So like finding your angle and what you do. So obviously. I'm very mediocre at video games. I'm nobody's going to watch me because I'm really, really good at video games. And I understand that. And that's totally fine. So selling myself as being like entertaining and, you know, laughing at my own desk and how mediocre I am is what people come and hang out for. So sure. we kind of have, um, I have a kind of co-host, um, when I stream and so we've been been streaming together and we have uh, a little collective of of followers and and viewers and they'll you know comment and keep everything lively and we have goofy uh like catchphrases almost that you know we'll repeat hit and, me with some of your best catchphrases well i personally i don't have very many um we do have well i, I kind of have one they refer to my stream as the kink shack because on wednesdays hump days ah, we yes. uh it started off as a joke like a couple of weeks ago we we discuss um kinks and somebody, mm. somebody who just like dropped by was like, "Hey, here's this BDSM test for everyone to take," and we were just like, "I guess this is our gimmick." So <laughs> that's kind of uh, been been something that's accidentally happened. So now you're but 
you are the proprietor of a kink shack. Uh, apparently. <laughs> on Wednesdays. But on Wednesdays. Only on Wednesdays. But uh, no, we, we've we been playing. Um, Do you play like kinky games like Bubble Bath Babes? No, we're not yeah. allowed to on, on Twitch. Um but we've we've you been probably playing play that one. It's from it's from NES. It's very eight bit. <laughs> There's yeah maybe they have a list of like banned games. Um, that really you're, yeah that you're just like not allowed. Almost you know they're obviously all like hentai games. But uh, no we um we mostly play uh, the Final Fantasy MMO RPG right now. Mm-hmm. So um, my my co host plays a white mage. So I, I dubbed him the title number one white mage boy. Mm-hmm. So that's that's something that that gets chanted quite a bit. And um, when he hit affiliate, you can make your own emotes nice. for um, the channel. And so he didn't know how to do it. So I took it upon myself to make them. And I made him one that said uh, number one white mage boy. And that one got approved uh, yesterday. So we've just been spamming it in chat and it looks obnoxious. Um, but yeah, just just give you stuff like that. It's it's really really fun. Um, the sense of community is probably the best part about it because yeah. you're just playing a video game, even if it's a video game you don't um, play yourself or know much about. It's still really fun. What's your favorite video game to play? Ooh, ooh, um, that's a tough question because I mean, as far as just like to sit down and play it for a duration of time, Overwatch for sure. Um, something that I want to sit down and play for maybe a couple of hours, um, would probably be Final Fantasy, um, the MMO that I've been playing, um, just because it's, there's always something to do in those. Sure. I gotta be honest with you. I am literally the world's shittiest video game player for the most part. I would say 95% of the time I'm terrible at it. Now put me in front of Tony Hawk. Uh, put me in front of Rock Band or put me in front of Mortal Kombat 3 Ultimate and I can really uh, shine there. But other than <laughs> that, you know, all the rest of the games out there besides those three that have been made, I'm terrible at them. Uh, so for anybody that goes out there and plays, I'm, I'm stoked about it because I like to I actually am terrible at it. So I enjoy watching other people play games. Yeah, it's super fun. Like I, I always um, thought that that aspect was kind of strange until I started doing it, and then I was like, oh man! And I started really getting into uh, esports. And actually, um, tomorrow uh, kicks off um, every. I think it's January, and then May. I think is the other one. Uh, it's like May or June. Um, they do speed running. It's it's sure. 24 7 for a whole week and there's just these people that have like just practice running these games as fast as possible so tomorrow starts uh starts off uh, awesome games done quick and there's just so many 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 games that they play and some of them are really difficult and really modern so it's not just you know Mega Man 2 that they're right. speed running and you know destroying this game but uh uh, one that I'm I'm super stoked about is somebody is doing an all monsters run of Bloodborne, uh, which only came out in like 2014. Um, it's it's by um, it's in the the Dark Souls uh, kind of. I've line. heard Dark Souls is in, insanely hard. Yes, they're all it's known very, for its difficulty. It's it, that's exactly what it's known for. So that's why I'm I'm super stoked to see because Bloodborne is considered like probably like one of the second hardest. Um, so to see someone to just run through that as fast as possible um, and, and kill every single monster in the game, because they actually found two monsters that have been hidden in the game's code um, last year. So to see that will be, be pretty cool. And I, I, anyone who spends that much time to like know how to run a game that fast is just like, whoa. Hey, you got to come over here and see that Donkey Kong kill screen. <laughs> oh, I know, right? <laughs> have you seen uh, King of Kong? Um, the documentary? I I have not. Well, but uh, do yourself a favor as a video gamer, you're gonna want to check this out. <laughs> I, I've heard about it, and it's like the the um, Donkey Kong uh, franchise. I mean, is like one of my favorite. That was like the only game that I had on Super Nintendo, and uh, I th- I personally feel like those games have the best soundtrack because mm. I mean, Water Level. Pff, yeah, Water Level is great. It's so good. All right, the whole podcast is not going to be me scatting Donkey Kong Country theme, but 
It could be. It could. You know, that could that could be. This a, podcast is taking a hard left here, guys. <laughs> uh, so if you don't want to hear me scat Donkey Kong, go ahead and pause it now and then <laughs> pick back up. No, I love Donkey Kong Country. Uh, one and now those are some games that I'm that I can play. Uh, you know, I, I guess as far as new games and stuff, um, I stick to my one player games that yeah. I don't I don't play anything competitively. So. You know, Uncharted. I'm like super into like the Uncharted uh, games. For Uncharted PS4. games are, are really good. Um, uh, have you played the new one? Uh, I have not. I have Lost Legacy. I just bought it. I haven't played it yet. It's it's really good. So. Um, they did a really good job having um, uh, female leads in that that aren't you know horribly written. Yeah. So it's pretty well, good. speaking of female leads here, uh, I'm going to ask you this question, and you know, I don't really, I know in on the internet, people are going to scrutinize everything one person says or does, so I don't really know how to word this the appropriate way, but mm. I have to say this that it's obviously probably going to be, it's got to be some, it's challenging for you being a female gamer uh, in the world of video games and having this Twitch channel. Do you is that do, have you come across any kind of challenges or hurdles or just people being dipshits? Um, absolutely. Um, actually the reason that my, um, name on Twitch is Marisa sucks is to kind of head off, um, any, any internet trolls. Cause that was my, my PlayStation gamer tag that I made. Mm-hmm. And I was like, nobody can tell me that I suck at a game. If my gamer tag already tells you that I suck, then right. the, everyone's just going to know that you're really bad at making fun of people. Um, so I haven't actually had too much issue with it. Um, there's been a couple of times, like I mentioned, I played Overwatch that kind of has a notorious, like toxic player base. But, um, for the most part, everyone's been like super nice when I play those games. There was like one time this dude, um, I, I'm really used to using, um, a mic when I, when I play. So, you know, people, if they didn't know from my gamer tag, know when I talk that I'm a girl. So there was like one guy just freaking out in chat. It was like, oh my God, it's a girl. Oh my God. Like, can you say something? And I'm like, mm, no, I'm going to uh, turn this off now. Can and you then, say something? Yeah. <laughs> like, they just want you to like well, certainly talk. You've heard a, a female speak before, and haven't it's you? It's like, do, do you have like a you mom have a mother or, a TV or a teacher or anything? <laughs> like, it's it's really bizarre, um, that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, other people have been pretty good about like, hey, like, leave them alone. And stuff like that. Um, as far as like Twitch, um, the only the only harassment that I've had so far, someone um, popped in my chat said, um, "The wage gap's a myth," and then never said anything else. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, that was it. Like yeah. they were they were going to like entice a riot. I'm going to troll you, and then I want to get the heck right out of here. Yeah, I was just like, I, I read it, and I was like, Do "You want to talk about this right now?" Because I mean. I've got some some tabs open, some saved ones of of you know, we can go about it if you if you need me to. But he didn't <laughs> I mean, say anything. We can anything. go toe to toe on this if you want to. But apparently, yeah. you just want to. You uh, just wanted s- to say it. Yeah. Wage gap Smith. I'm out of here. <laughs> Peace. Bye. If you need <laughs> me, I wouldn't be playing uh, Halo Four. Peace. You know, or whatever. Yeah, it was it was very bizarre. I know um, a a lot of uh, other other girls have it a lot worse than than I do, and I don't know if it's just because of uh, attitude or um, what games are played. Um, there's a lot of different factors. Um, I'm I'm pretty active on uh, the girl gamer subreddit, so I kind of see you know a lot of people post about negative experiences in there and stuff like that, and try to see like what we can do to um make the experience better sure so um a lot of a lot of girls um use voice changers for online gaming this is like scream Uh, yeah (laughs) yeah to make them sound like men and i'm just like i don't like i mean like if that's what you know you do you but i'm just like i i i can't be that person like on unsolved mysteries that has like the (laughs) changed voice and uh they blackened out the picture you know like it's like a shadow over your face and it's just like this is this is me playing video games yeah and it's like i just i'm just like that i don't i don't care that much to like install something on my computer to donkey kong country (laughs) it's fantastic that kind of sounds like Sam Elliott. A little. Bit. Yeah, the soundtrack's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, uh, that would be that would be a perfect voice changer. If I could get my if I could get a voice changer that made me sound like Sam Elliott, uh, I'd probably do it. 
Right. Like if I could get one that made me sound like celebrities, right. absolutely. Like sign me up. But if it was just one that was like generic man, I was like, no, I need something with a little bit more personality. Yeah. Like can't do that. chunks of real beef. <laughs> you know, that's a, yeah, I get the Sam Elliott one. Yeah. That's... I mean, if, if anybody's going to get one, the Sam Elliott one's pretty good. Matthew McConaughey's good too. I don't, I can't do a Matthew McConaughey impression, but that one's a pretty, uh, yeah, I feel that that could be. We get Christopher Lee, you know. That could, that could be a whole market, you know. Just I think just we've create, tapped into something. Here. We've tapped into something. We could we could do a service for all all of those female gamers out there that just want right. just want a male voice, but just the Sam Elliott, the yeah. Sam Elliott package. Because if somebody was harassing you and then heard that voice yeah. through comms, like no, no way, I'd be like, Ugh, yeah, every Ugh. man would just you know tip his hat <laughs> if they heard that voice. So you wouldn't even be mad if he got killed. Yeah, you'd just be like, oh, that yeah. sounded a lot like Sam Elliott. I guess he Sorry, plays video games. you've been terminated. And then you're like, oh, shit, well, I mean, I deserved Fuck. it. Uh, this is what I've been... Touche. <laughs> All right, guys, the Sam Elliott soundboard, it's coming your way. Coming your Ladies, way. Ladies, uh, uh, be... fall, uh, fall 2018, See? expect it. That's what I'm you know? saying, dude. This is how we just got real satanic here, and now our 2018 is just getting, <laughs> it's just skyrocketing, it's just building up and up. Well, let me ask you, how did you get into uh, just Twitch in general? Like, what made you decide to to do it one day? Um, well, I have some some friends that are um, actually had had streamed for a long time, and when I moved back to Kentucky um, from living living in Indianapolis, I didn't I didn't have like too many too many people that i was just like oh let's hang out so i just like hung out with this group of people and they're all just huge you nerds. should have called me bro we could have went to don pablo's we could have gone but there's is there a don pablo's no nope, they closed there? the one that was in clarksville oh, god damn because those those bucket of margaritas and it was only like ten dollars or some fucking crazy shit i used to go there all the time get trashed well the last time not the last time we hung out but two times ago and i don't mean to interrupt the story so just oh, no, we, we won't forget that the the story was but this how was did you get up. into it but yeah because it's uh brought up uh the maybe the last few times or whatever i had seen you um i went to the indy 500 and then randomly texted you because you're living in indianapolis and i was like well i'm on my way back home from the indy 500 do you want to get food and i picked you up and we went to don pablo's <laughs> and i was like completely beet red sunburnt and the food was uh how can you say subpar? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the margaritas were a value. So And that's that's what you really go for. Yeah, that's true. You know, the 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 value margaritas so that you get trashed enough that you don't really care that their food doesn't taste good. Yeah. But And I remember you had a big Lydia Dietz hat. Oh yeah, that was that was oh man, I have an even bigger Lydia Dietz hat nowadays. But it keep, the wind blows it off, so I don't wear it anymore. What you need is like a Raiden chin strap. I, I've thought about it. Like <laughs> one day I wore it and I was like, I had like a, a a ribbon on my shirt and I was like, I should just tie it down. We'll hot glue um, it here and here, and here and we'll tie it there. And then cinch. Um, Perfect. But but yeah, no. Um, so anyway, that was our Don Pablo story, guys. <laughs> There's a reason why Don Pablo's is out of business. And if it's still yeah. in business, we're sorry. But it's not. No, so don't worry about it. That's fine. <laughs> but now you're moved back from uh, Don Pablo country. From yeah, from, from Indianapolis. From Indianapolis. <laughs> and you're back into you're back in Louisville. You're back in Kentucky. Yeah, and and so uh, a group of um, uh, friends. They were all just uh, really really into video games. So it's just like I was like kind of into it. I was too poor to like grow up with video games. Like I had a Game Boy and would play Pokemon up to a certain point. And then that certain point comes and your mom's just like, look, you're 15 and you're playing video games and watching cartoons. Fucking stop. Yeah, get a job. Get, get. And you're just like, fine, I guess I won't be myself for a while. And uh, no, but uh, finding a group of friends that that you can kind of embrace your interests um, was really nice. So uh, they encouraged me to kind of get into video games and then I eventually um, built a computer and finished that in July and um, just started streaming um, as something fun to do that can potentially uh, generate, you know, some sort of, of income. Um, it's not guaranteed, but, you know, that's always a possibility. But, um, it's I mean, it's really just fun. Right. So It's kind of like how this podcast is. I mean, 
it's not a guaranteed source of regular income. Now I have made some money off of it, whether it's merchandising or through my affiliate programs, you know, uh, audible guys, if you need an audiobook, go to <laughs> audibletrial.com slash Sean versus wild and pick you up one. Um, but you know, it's mostly fun and it's mostly what I like so much is, you know, you just get to interact. Like you were saying, the community is so, so strong. Mm-hmm. Is that LaCroix hitting you? It, it, big time? It's like super bubbly. And I was like, it's coming out of my nose. Yeah. That's, uh, it's been affecting me also, so <laughs> don't feel bad. La Croix's got gotcha. <laughs> yeah, But LaCroix. the community, and just for me, like, I get to sit down and have face-to-face, most of the time, face-to-face interviews, or at least, you know, talk to people on the phone, yeah. and just have conversations. And it's nice. Yeah, and, and it's super fun. The The community part is, is definitely something that kind of um, took me by surprise, because I, I went into it not really expecting expecting um for anyone to have any sort of i guess um response where they they want to come back like every time that i'm streaming or it's a big deal but i mean now i'm at a point where you know i have a handful of people that you know follow me on twitter and and instagram and and all of these outlets like and respond when i'm like hey like had a great stream last night like thanks for for hanging out and they're like oh yeah blah 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 and, you know, stuff like that where it's it's not just their active in chat, it's other forms of social media as well. And then, you know, there's they're starting to become more of friends than viewers. And right. that stuff's really cool. Especially, too, you know, with comic conventions and different conventions and stuff that are, uh, I would just say comic conventions, but just different conventions and stuff that are around. That's a nice place where you can just get people to meet up, fly in, get all your group together and hang out. Yeah, and um, they actually have, you know, a whole facet of uh, conventions just for um, video games. Twitch has its own convention um, every October um, and stuff like that. So um, it's it's really cool that, um, you know, there are so many opportunities where it's like you can't actually, like, meet each other and, and hang out and, and all of this stuff. Yeah, hopefully it's not one of those. Hopefully your listeners out there aren't just going to be like, oh, Marisa sucks. Uh, uh, she sucks in real life, ain't it, games? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that was the one thing I was just like, oh, this does have a connotation to it, but we'll deal with that when that day comes. Yeah, we'll cross that bridge when it gets there. Yeah, it's not a big deal. So, yeah, with the, with the uh, uh, Twitch affiliate program, does it give you the potential, open up potential for... Um, uh, more money or is it more like a because uh, when you were explaining it it kind of sounded like a patreon almost like a patreon type service as well yeah. where people can say hey i like this i want to support it by giving x amount of dollars per month or episode or what have you yeah it is it is a little bit more um like patreon it is a little bit more of a guaranteed income because everybody can do um donations so that's that you can do that at, at any level um but with uh the affiliate you can you know actually subscribe or um they also have something uh called bits now um where you can donate bits which it's it's really just pennies right. so you know if you don't have enough to to you know donate you know uh, around about like $5 you can donate you know like 300 bits and yeah. that sounds way more impressive. Than, yeah, and people are probably like, dude, this is like Bitcoin, brother. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll farm it. But um, <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of options like that. It's it's a little bit, um, you know, you have to fill out like tax forms and stuff like that. So Yeah, and that's a headache. I've filled them out too, uh, oh, man, and those, I hate them. Those W-9s? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a W-9. Oh, great. Uh, but yeah, um, Twitch is uh, actually partnered with Amazon um that started i think over a year ago um so they use all of all of amazon's like tax information stuff so it was it wasn't as big of a pain as um some of uh other tax form things yeah. that i've had to do well audible same way audible's a, uh an amazon group now amazon company now so uh it was pretty simple but back when i was playing music and stuff you'd sometimes you have to like like, hey, we need you to fill out a W-9 so you can play here at this venue and get mm. a um, – you'll get, like, your tax return back at the end of the year from, like, some certain venues and stuff. I'm like, this is bogus. Yeah, that sounds You just terrible. wasted paper and you wasted my time and you ruined yeah. my tax season. Right. <laughs> I was going to have a great tax season until and this happened. This. You know what I'm saying? Roxy in Los Angeles ruined it for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway, so um, – 
you were saying like some of your favorite games. You grew up with like a Game Boy and all that sort of thing. Yeah. What are um, some of your favorite games just growing up besides the DKC? Um. Uh. Well, obviously, Pokemon was a the huge influence when I think I, I got that first game when I was like in fifth grade, mm-hmm. and um, played the the first couple of um runs of that was was super fun. Um, dabbled. Oh, another one that was like me and my brother's game was uh, Diddy Kong Racing on Nintendo sixty four. That was who. We would settle arguments with that. We would start arguments with that. Like that was. That was how it was. And um, we didn't have too many games. Mortal Kombat 3, we had that as well. That one was pretty dope. Um, I think 2 is the one with all the cheat codes. We always wanted that one. But we could never, never uh, able to get that. Um, those were like the main video games that we, we grew up with. Um, the Disney ones, we had a couple, but they were so hard. Like right. we had, we had the Lion King one for Sega and we were just like, what is this? Like, how do, how do you beat this? I'm not going to lie. Okay. Now this is something that I've realized because I was telling you, I'm not good at any game, but whenever I was a kid, my sister and I would rent video games from like Roadrunner video before there was a blockbuster here in Indiana. We yeah. had Roadrunner video and, uh, we rented the Lion King several weekends and we beat it several times. And now it's like, that game was really hard. And I was like, I don't know what to tell you, man. I knew which monkeys to roar at. Well, the the level that was the hardest was uh, the second one where... Stampede level? No. The will to be stampede? No. I think that one is after it. But the second the second level is where you're uh, jumping on the draft heads yes. to I can't wait to be king. Mm-hmm. And That's where you got to like, roar at the certain monkeys that... Uh, throw you in different directions. Uh, yeah, I think so. It was like further, further in the level, but um, it was like the timing of like how long you could like be on that last draft head before you could like jump or like slide off or something like that. Like we just could not get it like for the life of us. Man. We're just like, Whoa. I've heard people. It's got a reputation now as being super hard. Yeah, it's not the hardest game. Uh, I had a regular Nintendo. So, I mean, I, I grew up with not having a lot of games either. And uh, that maybe that's why I'm not good at them because I'm good at like four games because those are the, like all that I owned. And yeah, then those are I the didn't mechanics, play the other you know? ones. Yeah. Um, but, you know, certain games when I was a kid, like I had a game called Fester's Quest for NES and it was ridiculously hard. And I've gotten to like maybe level. Well, like I, I don't even know if there's I don't even know if there's another level. OK, but the main level I've been into like one or two buildings and then my whole life or I had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and I've made it, I can get past the level with the dam and the water and stuff, the swimming mm-hmm. level that a lot of people have uh, beef with. I can get past that. The level after it never been past in my entire life. I'm 31 years old. I played that game <laughs> 10,000 times, never gotten past level three of Ninja Turtles. There's uh there's a couple of, of YouTubers, um, that I'll watch them and do reviews of like the older games, like this, especially the Super Nintendo games, because that's when like the graphics were a little bit better, but right. they were still just as difficult as you know the the Nintendo games, and they're just like, "Yep, this level's bullshit," mm-hmm. and it's just like even as an adult, even like someone who like people who have grown up with games understand these mechanics, they still just like can't do it. And it's just like these games were designed for children. <laughs> yeah, for children to fail. To, to fail. Learn. Yeah, maybe this was just a teaching tool. Like, look, guys, disappointment is going to be a big part of your life. Okay, and so, so uh, get here's used a video to game. It. Uh, we're going to slap your favorite characters on it so that the the lesson you know sinks real deep with you. Yeah, and that way the the failure is that you'll take it that much uh, harder. Yeah, it's going to be maybe personal. that's why so many people online now are like, uh, I hate my life. Yeah, it's the video games, bro. It's the video games. This is what Family this is why people are depressed and bipolar and all that sort of thing right now. The, the mental illness epidemic, it's all because of the it's Lion King. It's all because King we we, on we Sega Genesis. couldn't couldn't beat the Lion King on Sega Genesis. <laughs> Don't even get me started on Aladdin. Oh yeah, I know. Ooh. Sega was my jam. See, I Sega, never, Sega I was a good console. I got a Super Nintendo late in life. Like after the 64 was out, everything. Mm. And I got a 64 when I was like uh in high school. So when it was well past its prime. Now, I did have a PlayStation. I was a PlayStation kid, but I got 64 pretty late. So I'm kind of behind on all that sort of thing. But I still am into PlayStation. Uh, 
I don't keep up to currently, but like I was saying, I played Uncharted. So I have a PS4 and I yeah. have a PS3. PS3 is like maybe my favorite console of the new ones because yeah. the one player games. I can fail in private in my own, the privacy of my own well, home. I mean, PS4 has a lot of uh, really great single player titles. This was the year of single player games. I mean, you had Nier Automata, um, uh, Hellblade, um, what was. Um, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, all of those three games were really, really good. Um, Near Automata, I can't recommend enough because that was beautiful. That was by the same makers of uh, Bayonetta. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that game, but oh my god, that is uh, an an anime 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 game. <laughs> but that probably that game probably brought them because um, they were they were close to bankruptcy, and now they're bringing Bayonetta to the Switch and. They're also making a Bayonetta three, which they have put off for for several years. Which a Switch is a pretty cool console. I personally don't own one. I've played it a couple of times, but I'm like, wish it was a little bit cheaper so I could buy. But yeah. there's some there's some cool little games on that. You know, I have a friend, uh, Kevin Fletcher. If you're listening, which you should be, and if not, well, that Rude. sucks. Yeah, <laughs> Rude. <laughs> Rude. But uh, he loves uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild. That's the big one, you know. Yeah, that that was like their their main title that they launched with, and like not a lot of people. Um, I know I was very skeptical on the Switch because it was like they had only had like a very small selection of games that they were like, "This is what we yeah. have." Mario Odyssey and this Bomberman game, and yeah, Zelda. and then well, no, and they also had um, the Binding of Isaac, which is a really fucked up game if you've never played that. Oh, you're just this little naked baby whose mom like threw him in the closet because she loves Jesus. And you have to fight all of these mutants to get your way out. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> um, it's very, it's very crudely, <laughs> crudely animated. But there's this t- a terrifying um, stop motion claymation thing uh, to open the game with. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty fucked up. But uh, now, yeah, left and right, they it's pretty much like. A couple of titles a month, it seems like, are coming out for the Switch. And I heard that there's so many titles in there, like electronic catalog too so they have like so many games to download which the idea of the switch uh it is kind of pricey i feel like because to me like nintendo's basically focused on like family fun and fun i think like it's focused on fun and not so much like having the latest most cutting edge graphics and stuff like that you know like an xbox or a playstation might yeah the the graphics on the switch are are pretty comparable though um they brought a lot of titles over um the new uh doom game that came out like last year or the year before they brought that to switch which i was kind of surprised um there's a there's a couple of other games um that they've brought to switch and the comparisons like side by side from like a a bigger console to the switch um you don't really u- lose that much uh graphically sure which is is kind of like you did it nintendo yeah but i was just saying like i think um you know the price wise like yeah, it would be nice i guess to see it come down a little bit but i think the the appeal of switch is like and i don't know what nintendo's plans are but i could see nintendo basically doing away with like their ds line and it's just like hey you've yeah, got a that's, switch that's now home and portable console yeah and that's kind of what it seems like um that's that's their direction cuz they're still coming out with like some titles on um you know uh, DS and whatnot, but it does, and it, and you can kind of tell that it's it's going to be the end of DS when Nintendo's like, yeah, we're coming out with like an actual Pokemon game on Switch, yeah, because that's that's their their longest selling title like to date. It's made them so much money, so it's like if they're like, yeah, we're not really gonna do that on DS anymore. It's gonna be on Switch, so that's kind so of like nail in the make coffin. The Switch. <laughs> To, to uh, our other product, that this one's going to be three hundred dollars. Three hundred. If you can find it. If you, yeah, you it's genius have that. marketing. Nintendo, it, you've knocked it out of the park. They really did, and and to have it like so limited when they first released it was, um, pretty uh, kind of messed up, but really good business business model. Yeah, or, it's kind of like when you sell those people. Uh, remember, like last year, people were like going ham for the Nintendo classics. Oh, yeah, and they did not make enough. They didn't make enough. And then the Super Nintendo Classics, just the same. They had a little bit more this year. Like, one of my friends was actually able to get one, like, by chance. And I was like, oh, you didn't have to wait out in front of a Best Buy for three days 
That's cool. Nailed it. Like, got it. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, um, it, it does, though, I do, like I said, I have a few friends that, that have Switch, and um, it does seem to be uh, pretty awesome. And now that they're going to have a Pokemon game, I'm sure people are going to go oh, yeah. crazy for it. I didn't get, I didn't get into Pokemon. I got to be honest with you. Because you said that you, you like Pokemon, because we're about the same age. I think I might be a year or two older than you. Yeah. Um, and whenever Pokemon came out, I was in like the seventh grade. Yeah. And see, that's where I was in fifth grade. So I was just like that, that I felt was like the appropriate age is like that and under. Right. Because it was just like, if you were older, like already in middle school and you were like getting into that, you're kind of like, eh, what's wrong with you? Well, I feel like, you know, I had some friends, some friends that were into Pokemon, uh, that were in my grade. Most everybody a year or two younger than me, super into Pokemon, yeah. super into like, Dragon Ball Z, the anime kick, because we were talking um, before I uh, pressed record on my Talkboy tape recorder here, <laughs> um, you know, that I don't know much at all about anime. And I think it's just a generation gap there because I was just born like one year too early. Uh, yeah. Um, Cause but it was kind of it was kind of that same time period um, when anime just started coming to America and it was just like kids WB, man, they had Dragon Ball Z, they had Pokemon and I think they also played like Sailor Moon and, and those kind of titles was just like, that's, that's what I watched. Like when I got home from school, that's what I watched when you were waiting for the bus. Whereas, you know, you being a little bit older, it, you know, See, didn't really like, hit, uh, you know, Batman, the animated series. Yeah. Uh, Superman, Justice League. They had a Spider Man show. Um, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? The animated, but also the game yeah. show. Both of those were, were nice. I had the Fox 41 Kids Club growing up. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I actually, I don't even think the WB was even a thing whenever I was a kid. Uh, I think it didn't become a thing until about the seventh grade when the frog. You know, got yeah, and on there. He, he, yeah, he had like his own little personality. He was like, oh, here's some cartoons for you guys. Yeah. And I actually, um, spoiler alert, guys, uh, I'm into some weird stuff. Uh, speaking about Kink Wednesdays, but uh, the WB and the CW, uh, some of those programs, uh, randomly, I will find myself uh, watching them and I'll be like, this is stupid. And then I'll finish the episode and I'm like, well, I got to see what the next episode's like then. Yeah. That's how it was. Uh, Veronica Mars, I think, started it when I was in high school. Oh, man. Veronica Mars. I, I remember, like, accidentally, like, just looking up and that was on the TV and you were just like. She's a private oh, investigator oh. and a student. How is she going to juggle the responsibility and I'm, solve the case? I need to understand her life. You know. But yeah, Veronica Mars, Pretty Little Liars, the same thing. Everybody's like, you got to check out Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> and when I say everybody, I mean every uh, female person, like every friend that I have's uh, wife would be like, hey, you got to check out Pretty Little Liars. I'm like, yeah, I'll totally watch this. Not. And then one day I watched the first episode and 30 minutes in, I was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> this is garbage. And then, you know, 10 minutes later when the episode wrapped, I'm like, so that's how it ends. Well, I got to see what happens Guess. next. <laughs> Why you got to leave me on a cliffhanger like that? Right. And so it goes. Pretty Little uh, Liars. Never, the CW and the WB. Never never got into that. But they, they did have some shows that were definitely like roped you in. Like they, they knew. They knew how to make a cliffhanger episode. I haven't seen uh, Riverdale yet, but I'm sure that'll be a show like that for me where I'm like, this is dumb. And then. Yeah, because isn't it just like the Archie comic? It's just Archie <laughs> mixed with, I'm sure, Pretty Little Liars. Yeah. Like I, that's I keep seeing like pictures like stills from the actual show like people will like retweet and I'm like, is that dude, it's that a, guy wearing the Archie hat. Yeah, like, it's, it's a huge phenomenon. One of the kids from the Sweet Life of Zach and Cody's playing Jughead and he's got the Jughead hat on. I guess. Wow. Whatever. Wow. I don't know. The, the the one of the main kids or someone else. Um, they just got some kid that has like a six pack or maybe an eight pack. I don't know. And uh, they dyed his hair red, and he's Archie. Oh, okay. Because I was like, I remember the the main kids from Sweet Life and Zach and Cody. One of them got in trouble for some nudies. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're asking the main kids. Uh, yes, the main kids from Z the S Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Either Zach or Cody. One of the uh, twins. One of them. Or, or both of them. I don't know. They <laughs> yeah, they me swap once, them out. You know, you know they daddy. split a, split a paycheck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fooled me once. Big Daddy. Fool me twice. Shame on me. But uh, one of them is definitely Jughead in oh. in the Riverdale. Oh, okay. 
Okay, good. We're good gonna have to check them. it out. But see, sometimes yeah. like something like that, I could probably get behind. But so, uh, so many people are like you got to check out Arrow, you got to check out Flash, Ugh. and I watch it, and I was like, yeah, dude, Arrow. I love superheroes. And then when I'm like, Arrow doesn't need to have problems with girls. Arrow what? doesn't need to have you know, oh, dude, but the proms tomorrow type of like problems. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> like, yeah, those look kind of real bad like so um i watched a few episodes i I passed on that yeah i saved my teenage problems for uh you know 90210 and pretty little liars yeah rewatch some degrassi yeah absolutely something like that so yeah well what can people find you um playing uh these days let's get back to the twitch thing because oh yeah yeah. you know what i'm saying let's talk about you playing video (laughs) games so you're playing final fantasy yeah the um, mmorpg the 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 mmo the memorg um so yeah um that's that's what i'm i'm currently doing um sometimes i'll I'll play like some other games um but that's kind of been my main focus because um as i mentioned my my co-host um he's super super into it what's your co-host name um his real name or his twitch name uh whatever we just give him a shout out on the show <laughs> oh yeah um so uh my 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 dear sweet co-host colin um or you can find him on twitch as olive croutons whatever. delicious yeah sounds great big shout out but, colin yeah but um with yeah. one l or two uh just one yeah I, no. I saw a facebook post about the different uh spellings of colin and people are like most people spell colin with one l if it's a first name and two l's with us if it's a last name it's not that hard so i was like now that I have read that post earlier today, <laughs> you got to specify it's relevant to our conversation. And now we all know how to spell Colin. Yes. So shout but, out Colin, yeah, aka Colin. Olive Croutons, number one white mage boy. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, he's he's super into it. He's way better at the game than me. Um. So yeah, I'm just I'm just uh you know struggling along, um, having a great time playing that. Um. Sometimes I'll I'll switch over to um. Uh, once a month or whenever they have events. Kink Wednesdays. Um, well, aside from Kink <laughs> Wednesdays, um, unless this is your specific kink, then um, uh, whenever Overwatch is having uh, an event, I do um, do a stream dressed up as Diva because um, I also cosplay. So um, that's always that's always fun. Oh, you cosplay too? I do. I knew that. Yeah. I just wanted to act like super surprised what? as we segue into the next part of our conversation. Oh boy! So you do a lot of do some cosplay. I hear. I, I do. I do. I. I have. Um. I. I mean. I already look like an anime character. So why not? You know, go the extra mile and and wear their actual outfits and wigs that look like their hair. I have a few. I've had a few cosplayers on the show here. You're the third Ooh. in the Sean vs. Well podcast. So big shout out to Mega Monster and Shayzilla who have been on beforehand. Uh, if you haven't uh, seen their us. work, check them out. Uh, but yeah, so uh, what are some of your favorite uh, cos to play? Costumes. Um, I really, I really do like my diva costume. Um, I, I really like cosplaying a character that I, I can per, uh, connect with uh, personality wise, and that I do look like. Um, so uh, diva and Oscar um, from Neon Genesis. Uh, which is an older 90s anime we talked about earlier. Um, those are the two main characters um, that I have uh, quite a few cosplays for. But I've also done um, a couple of other uh, characters. I've done uh, Ramona Flowers um, from Scott Pilgrim. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I've done uh, Gogo Yubari. Um, I really, that's a fun costume. Um, that's, that is a fun costume because, oddly enough, a couple I'm years good. ago, ran into you. On Halloween, yeah, at uh, we're on Bardstown Road, uh, and y- oddly enough, we went to a Quentin Tarantino. Uh, we had like a Quentin Tarantino costume party, uh, a group of people, I guess, and uh, you were randomly uh, at the same place we were, dressed as Gogo Yubari, so it worked yeah. out perfectly. Yeah, we were all just just hanging out. Um, I've worn that one uh, a couple of times just when it's like, because it's a very easy costume. I don't have to put much effort into it. So I'm just like, like oh, weird costume. It's like, I'm, I'm just going to dress up as Go-Go and put blood on my face. Um, that's, that's pretty it. much how I dressed as Butch from uh, <laughs> Pulp Fiction. All you had to do is be bald, check, have a bloody nose and a bloody white t-shirt. Check and check. Got it. And a sword. Nailed it. Yeah, those are those are the, the, the best ones. And you can just like hang out. Um, getting drunk in costume is like my favey fave. So, um, yeah, cons, that's, that's usually the, the first thing that I do is like, where's the beer truck? Oh, yes. So, you know. So you got Asuka and Diva. 
and um, Ramona Flowers. Yeah, Ramona Flowers. Um, I've also done, um, I haven't done this at a con, but uh, Setsuki from Kill la Kill. Um, I actually, I don't have a lot because I had, I do multiple costumes of a lot of the characters that I um, cosplay. Um, but uh, this coming year, I would like to do um, 2B from Near Anamata. Um, a, um, another skin of a diva. Um, with LED lights, because I've never made a cosplay with LEDs. And uh, there was another one that I, I thought... Oh, um, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce her name. It's this frog girl from uh, My Hero Academia that everyone is like, this character reminds me of you. So You um, remind me of this frog. <laughs> you remind me of this girl who acts a lot like a frog. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I should I should probably... And then I actually watch the anime, and I'm like... I get it. So you'll have to school me on all this anime. I'm glad that I have this recorded for posterity. So that way I can go back and be like, ah, yes, the 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 frog, frog, the frog frog anime, neon Genesis Evangelion. Yeah. That one. I remembered that from previous conversation. Look at you go. Nailed it. But yeah, those, um, I, I, I am not as active, uh, cosplaying as I used to be because it does take a lot of time and money. What goes into Um, it? What goes into your cosplay? Um, I I do a lot of uh, I I make I mostly nowadays only have time to make my own props. Um, so any type of um, guns, armor, um, anything extra like that, shoes. Um, that's really the only thing I have time for. So I sometimes have to either modify or just write out purchase like the dresses and stuff like that, which kind of sucks. But um, you know, cut corners. Um, everyone cosplays to the best of their ability, so there's not really a right or wrong way to do it. If somebody makes every inch of what they're wearing or buys every inch of what they're wearing, it doesn't matter. Sure. Um, so shouldn't be rude about it. Um, but yeah, that's um, that's basically, I mean, kind of the gist of it. So um, I use a, a lot of um, thermoplastics and, and things like that and just make stuff. Yeah, don't be rude about it just because someone doesn't have the, you know, uh, the most, uh, I don't know, homemade Yaya Han uh, cosplay. Exactly. Yeah. Yaya Han, you hear that? Oh, look, you're dropping names. I'm dropping names because I know things about cosplay now. Thanks to my guests and thanks to you. And Mm -hmm. I I do like to go to Comic-Con. So which conventions will you be at this Um, year? Or what do you got your eye on at least? This year, I would like to go to Colossal Con. Um, it's in Ohio. Um, would like to. I go to Gen Con um, pretty much every year because I also play D and D and stuff like that. Um, oh, do you play D and D? Are you in a campaign right now? Uh, I'm not. We we've been doing one off campaigns, and it's been kind of a while um, since since we've done one with like holidays and work schedules and and stuff like that. So it's it's kind of been a bummer because I really do enjoy it. Um, I'm playing right now, guys. I know you guys probably thought I was just this all all uh all American He Man uh guy, but no, I do Look like to play you, <laughs> I you like nerd. to play nerd. I do like to play Dungeons and Dragons and It's so uh, much fun. Yeah, I'm like a level nine uh monk. Oh, of course you'll play a monk. I, I play a druid. I didn't always play a monk, okay. My previous campaign. So it's a three part thing. So okay. story number one, already done, campaign done. I was a rogue tiefling. And then now I'm a monk elf, wood elf. And then who knows where I'm going to end up in the third one. But the events that happen in one and two will culminate in an exciting conclusion in part three. That's pretty cool. We've been um, being absolutely ridiculous with our characters and uh, going pretty over the top. So uh, our last uh, campaign that I played, um, I I played Jane, the uh, druid elf, who... um, was basically a burnout, went to a lot of uh, EDM music festivals mm-hmm. in the forest. As you would. And, yeah. you know, that Electric was, forest. That was kind of her persona. <laughs> and, you know, we do the voices and get, like, real animated. So everyone else was equally ridiculous. Yeah, my character also had zero charisma. Like, it didn't. Mm. he was not a charismatic character, so I just uh, made him not be able to speak common. Oh, that that works. Even though technically all elves speak, you know, Elvish in common. I was like, I just refuse to speak common for Absolutely the first not. six no months. Charisma. And then all of a sudden my character was just like, ha ha, surprise. 
And uh, boy, <laughs> does he have some smart, ugly things to say to the crew now that he spent uh, six months in silence with them. <laughs> so, yeah. Just observing. Yes, just observing. Just oh, ammunition was... to, you know, be witty with later on. So you're going to Gen Con, Colossal Uh, Con. Yeah, Uh, Gen Con, Colossal Con. um, I would like to go to PAX West, um, which is a video game convention in Seattle. And then uh, Twitch Con, which is in Long Beach um, towards the middle of October. So not not too many this year, but I only went to uh, two last year and the year before. So trying to expand... You know, see some stuff. Yeah. I went to uh, Wizard World Comic Con in Indianapolis, mm. uh, and I met the Bella Twins from Ooh. WWE. Nice. And if anybody knows me, knows I love wrestling. Yeah, they have a lot of wrestlers at those. Um, w- uh, I went to C2E2 last year, and they had the the Luchadors from something wrestling Ma- stuff. Maybe Sin Cara or, well, Luchadors. I don't know they have their a- name. Well, it could be anybody. Yeah. They, luchadors they were, a whole continent of wrestling. Well, a whole country well, of wrestling. Well, it wasn't like Mexican luchador. It was yeah. uh, whatever. Probably somebody from either Lucha Underground or you probably got Sin Cara or Kalisto from WWE. Yeah. Something like that. sounds right. Don't worry. Okay. What you, you'll teach me all about anime and I'll teach you all about WWE and other wrestling. Yeah, and, uh, I learned a little bit about it when I lived in Indianapolis. That's we would watch wrestling videos all the time. I'm like, okay, yeah. sure. Um, Boy, Ultimate is this Warrior, <laughs> cool. <laughs> hey, Ultimate Warrior, fellow Hoosier, look yeah. at us, just three Hoosiers, just right three here. Hoosiers, just you hanging out. The spirit of Ultimate Warrior, right here in the Smithsonian. <laughs> just those great YouTube videos of him being coked out, yeah. just sweating. Yeah, load the spaceship with the rocket fuel. Load it with the Warriors. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that's exactly it. Yes, Hulk. Hogan. Yeah. Uh, Ultimate Warrior. Uh, but yeah, so where can people find you on uh, the internet? Um, you can definitely find me on Twitch. Um, you can just search uh, Marissa underscore sucks. And I stream um, pretty and it much. it looks a lot like Marissa, but it's Marissa. It's Marissa. M-A-R-I-S-S-A. Uh, yeah. Underscore sucks. S-U-X, right? I'm, I'm so sorry. My mom's family's foreign. <laughs> I wanted it pronounced this differently. This is America where everybody's going to be a Marissa. And then my mom was like, don't ever let anyone call you that. And I was like, all right. That's true. (laughs) (laughs) Don't you ever. Yes. But uh, yeah, I I stream um, pretty much every night um, around 830 until midnight or later. Um, If if they're my days off, um, I'll go a little bit longer or start a little bit earlier, um, which currently I'm off uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. But uh, that's usually what I'm doing every weekend. Um, You can also follow me on uh twitter um same username um instagram if you want to be real weird about it but um if you want to talk about video games you know twitter and twitch are definitely where to find me heck yeah and then um make sure you guys are you know interacting get on twitch i'm going to download twitch as soon as this podcast is over because i got to see what it's all about and yeah, you uh, can see some some great clips of uh me me and my co-host um just heckling each yeah. other i'd love to support you i'd love to tune in on uh you know see what you guys are up to and then you guys if you already have twitch marissa uh, uh, marissa m-a-r-i-s-s-a <laughs> underscore sucks s-u-x uh and uh make sure you check out her content and uh now that you are an affiliate. Yeah, you can sub to me and, and support me heckling my co-host. Throw a few bits her way, man. Yeah. She's got to get to uh, TwitchCon and toss, Gen Con. Toss them at it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, be generous there. And uh, guys, if you like the show, I know you like the show because we're already an hour in and you're still listening. So, uh, But if you like my show, you can check it out at SeanVersusWild.com. And also you can hit me up uh, on Facebook.com slash SeanVersusWild and at Sean vs. Wild on Twitter and uh, Instagram, Sean vs. Wild Podcast. But I have a YouTube page and uh, all that other sort of thing. So subscribe to that. And uh, yeah, so same old, same old every week. I say it all the time. So you guys know where to find me. Support him. He does Support. good work. Oh, you do good work. I try, man. Now let me ask you, as we're going to wrap it up, we're going to end on a super high note. And everybody's going to want to ask. I, this is the question everybody's going to want to know. Since you brought up Kink Wednesdays, mm. what, are the, what, what are the big kinks for Wednesday? Like what are the big ones uh, that you've um, come across or the ones you've discovered of yourself? Well, when we all took our uh, BDSM test, um, we, we kind of have just really two kinks in the group. So far, uh, Rope Bunny and Switch. 
So um, are those the kinks or are those their their nicknames? <laughs> those are the kinks. What does that mean? Um, so a rope bunny is someone who likes to be tied up. Okay, gotcha. Um, that kind of you know obvious, but it sounds adorable. And then a switch is somebody who likes to go between being dominant and submissive. Oh. So they they're not solely one or the other. They like to go back and forth. Sounds like a normal person. Exactly. That's what I said. Why I was like, this that? isn't this doesn't sound like a kink. It just sounds like you're normal. It should just be called average. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is the the if anyone would like to, if you if you do plan to stop by uh, my Twitch page, um, please go to bdsmtest.org beforehand, fill out your BDSM test, and then drop the link in the chat, and we'll put your kink on the board. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's been uh, the majority of them. Uh, there is vanilla is listed on the test, which I'm just like, what's mm, more, what's more vanilla than than a switch? Yeah, but what is vanilla? I don't know. Just boring. It's just, I, just you only like missionary. I guess it's probably just like lay there. That's yeah, probably <laughs> <laughs> just vanilla. like a fish. Lay there. Anyway, but yeah. <laughs> guys, this is uh, this is hard hitting stuff. This is the first uh, that content. Yes, this is quality content. Hashtag quality content uh but yeah guys check out uh marisa underscore sucks on twitch and on twitter and if you want to be a creep about it instagram <laughs> her words not mine uh, check out the show and uh yeah thank you so much for thanks being for here. having me and i'm glad that we got to sit around and uh watch satanic imagery this entire time <laughs> yeah this is amazing and talk about uh video games and cosplay yeah, it was a great time. So, yeah. Thanks for having me, man. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for being here. And, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been the Sean vs. Wild Podcast.